Unfortunately, um, each piece of code is not really being run uh, exactly um, synchronously. They're not being run at exactly the same time. Um, what's happening here is that this process still has to complete in order for um, the the interpreter to continue. So you notice here in this example, uh, we put a little timer in. Start with that same URL, create a stop and start button just as before, uh, which sets the rate for, for an image, uh, either to, to zero or to none to stop and start it. Uh, in this case, we put another, um, another item in the GUI, which is a field. And in that field, we're going to place uh, the current time and we use the precise refinement uh, to show uh, nanoseconds. And on that, again, we're doing the same thing. We're assigning a rate of zero, uh, watching for time, and what, what's going to happen every time that time event occurs, so basically continuously, um, as we're changing the text on that face, the text on that field, uh, to be the current time, and we're updating the face. What you're going to notice when we run this code is that that time is not updated constantly. Instead, you'll see that as each of the images is downloaded, and while we're waiting for each of those images to download, the timer stops. Because for that brief period while the download is occurring, uh, the interpreter is focused just on doing that one thing. So although this appears to be um, a, a s asynchronous process, two things happening at the same time, and to the user, uh, in most cases, that uh, that's virtually in indistinguishable bet between being a uh, asynchronous process and something that's happening, uh, you know, at, at consecutive times. If we stop the video, you'll see the difference. When I stop this video, you'll see that the counter goes on um, and continues perfectly without stopping. So this is not a completely asynchronous um, operation. The interpreter does have to wait for that download to occur before it can update the timer. This timer is still running, but we're waiting here to get an image from the, the server. So while that's happening, the timer is basically stopped. And although it will continue when the image is downloaded, it does take, in this case, we're having trouble getting the network connected. So that timer is stopped and it's just waiting. So in order to make, uh, to make that work exactly asynchronously, we have a, another option here. And this is basically as effective as using threads, just a little bit easier and doesn't require any operating specific code. Uh, what we can do is basically run a totally separate program. And one way to do that in a simple in a single bit of code is to write the code for a separate program. In this case, we're going to write to a file called async.r um, an entire program. Um, we've got the header on top, rebel with the lock, and then view layout. And in this case, we're putting the clock, um, that field, and the timer in that timer code in a separate um, file. And then we're using the launch command to run that. So it'll ap actually be a separate program. And in that case, if we use the launch um, function to run that code, async.r, it will not wait. It's going to be two separate processes completely at the operating system level, two separate programs. It'll launch a separate version of the interpreter, and that will run um, completely asynchronously from our video code. So we have the same video code down here, downloading, downloading an image from this URL. We've got a button to stop and start it that changes the rate. Um, so we can work with um, multitask events in, the, in that one GUI. And then we have the separate async.r program. And this little trick basically lets you write as many separate little programs at the same time, which can communicate via network protocols, via HTTP protocols, or uh, if they need to share information, they, could, for example, could um, could do that uh, by sh by writing to a file on the hard drive, for example. Now we have two totally separate um, bits of code that are running here as separate processes in the operating system. So the timer is going. Whether or not we stop the video, you can see that we're downloading 
the image here as we go along. And the video is updating whether or not it stopped or started. And that timer continues to go. So if you tru need truly asynchronous processes uh, that are running at exactly the same time without waiting for anything else in the GUI to occur, um, that's the way to do it in Rebel. And uh, it's fairly simple. You can, you can do it all in a single code file. Just write the code that you want to be separate into a file and then launch it.